Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you can use. In this particular video, I'm going to do a stock analysis review on Novix. Is this little known lithium ion battery technology company worth investing in right now? Well, let's find out together. I'm going to go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent headline news, financials, analyst predictions, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your short term and long term growth investors out there. And as always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. So let's get right into it. So as always, folks, this video is brought to you by Weeble, which is an online brokerage trading platform where you can buy stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. If you sign up today and deposit any amount, you can get up to 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below. All right, so Inovix Corporation is engaged in designing, developing, and manufacturing silicon anode lithium ion batteries. Now, the company has developed and delivered sample batteries to consumer electronics manufacturers. The company is developing custom three dimensional silicon lithium ion batteries for wearable, mobile computing, and communication device applications. Now, the company's products include uh, uh, includes for eyewear cell, which consists of approximately 664 watt hours per liter of energy density. Uh, for wearable devices, uh, that consists of 714 watt hours per liter of energy density. And the hand sent cell for, uh, and for smartphone or laptop cells, that consists of approximately 900 uh, watts per liter of energy density. Now the company is also developing its 3D cell technology and per, uh, production process with automobile manufacturers. Let's say Tesla maybe, hopefully, and uh, for electric vehicle and energy storage markets. So let's look at some of the major news over the past couple of weeks that uh, that has really taken off this company. All right, so one of the biggest news a few weeks back was the shares initially surged about 25% after the company posted its first quarter with revenue and secured a follow-on contract to build and test custom cells for use with the U.S. Army Soldiers Central Power Source. Now, the U.S. Army Soldiers Central Power Source is called the Conformal Wearable Battery and is created by Inventus Power. Uh, the Inovix uh, said Wednesday that it expects to begin shipping the first battery cells to Inventus Power next year. Now, and 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 Ovix uh, said it aims to manufacture the cells at its U.S.-based uh, factory. The company added that the advocates for strengthening the power indus uh, industry ecosystem within North America and increasing manufacturing capacity to support the critical EV adjustment markets. Now, the company also posted better than expected results for the second quarter. The company lost a penny per share for the quarter. Now, stripping out the stock-based compensation and the change in fair value of the liability of warrants, the adjusted loss came to about 13 cents a share. Uh, uh, analysts surveyed by FactSet were expecting an adjusted loss of 17 per, uh, cents per share. Now, revenue came in around $5.1 million, and the company's first quarter reporting a commercial revenue. Now, the analyst expects about $300,000 more in revenue, according to FactSet. Nearly all that revenue came from one customer, the company said. Uh, now, the company said now that it reached commercialization, it is focused on ramping up manufacturing to meet the future expected demand, which is great news for the company. For the full year, the company expected revenue between six to eight million dollars. I think they're going to get it. Now, shares rose more than 25% last week to $20.25. And the stock is down about 26% so far year over year. Now, let's go over some of the key milestones of the company in this next article. So they announced um, uh, uh, back in August 10th the uh, significant customer milestones that they, they're reaching for 2022. Now, they are definitely the leader in the design and manufacture for the next 3D uh, silicon lithium ion batteries. Now, the key customer-related milestones in the second quarter of 2022, this includes the shipping commercial sales and reporting that first revenue that I just explained to you. Now, the commercialization of the company's next-gen battery is definitely driving accelerated engagements with the company's strategic accounts. That, those are accounts that are greater than $200 billion of market capitalization. 
This included the completion of technology qualification within three of these accounts. Now, also in the second quarter, Innovix added 12 new accounts to its 1.5 billion revenue funnel, bringing the total number of accounts to more than 75, nearly double the number at the end of quarter two of 2021. Now, active devices and design wins in the company's funnel increased to $414 million in the second quarter of 2022, up from $371 million in the first quarter of 2021. Now, the total number of design wins increased uh, to eight, up from five at the end of quarter two, 2021. Now, the uh, Cam Dales, the GM and Chief Commercial Officer at Invo, uh, Novik, says, Our customers have told us that they are leveraging our batteries to develop remarkable new form factors for their mobile products and to enable important new features previously constrained by the limits of conventional battery power. Now, uh, they believe that the next generation of mobile commuting platforms cannot reach their full potential without a step uh, change improvement in battery technology. Uh, like what Innovix is bringing to the market today. Now, while there's much work ahead uh, of us to grow the business and reach our ultimate production goals, we are extremely optimistic about our ability to scale our manufacturing in order to make the products that our customers need to win um, in their own competitive markets. Now, during that second quarter, they shipped sales to 10 OEMs and four distributors globally from the Fab One production line. Now, these cells will be used for a combination of prototype development, product qualification, and field trials for, uh, to end products. And Ovix also completed a development uh, program and it delivered its first integrated battery packs with multiple cells and electronic power control circuitry, which is designed to provide a complete solution for customers, simplifying their manufacturing process and shortening their time to market. Finally, during the quarter, Innovix received the UN 38.3 certification for its wearable cell from a third-party laboratory. Now, Energy Assurance um, is the United Nations standard for the transportation of lithium-ion batteries and is only granted uh, to products that meet strict international safety and abuse tolerances standards through a series of certified test protocols. Previously, the company had self-certified its cells through its own internal test lab. So this is all great news for the company. But now let's let's change up a little bit. And I know they're ramping up production. Um, but what are what are the fundamentals of the company right now uh, give us? So the the company is currently trading at twenty dollars and twenty eight cents a share, with a market capitalization of roughly three point two billion dollars. Now, the company is projected to have $6.3 million to $7 million for um, revenue for 2022, with negative earnings of around $32 million. Now, the revenues are projected to significantly increase over the next few years to about $201 million by the end of 2024, with negative earnings of a whopping $159 million. Now, even though the revenue forecast is to grow 76% per year, the company's reinvestment into the company will push the earnings more negative, more research and development, more ramping up production. So this is, I, I see this is okay. This is just typical uh, because you definitely want to ramp up when you, when you actually start it up. So earnings are forecasted to decline on average about 3.5% per year for the next three years. Now let's look at some of the key measures of the company and do some analysis work with currently uh, with this company. So since the company has negative earnings, the price to sales ratio is the most appropriate valuation measure. Now it's a good value based on its price to book ratio of seven times compared to the peer average of 13.8 times. And if you look at the price to book versus the industry, it is expensive on a price to book ratio of uh, the industry average of 2.5 times. Now, um, their, their key data just came out. So a lot of people like CNBC aren't really reporting on it, but this gives you the peer industry average, your sector average, and your S&P 500 average. But uh, let me bring up my specific profitability analysis on this. So currently unprofitable and definitely not forecast to become profitable over the next three years, maybe depending on how many partnerships they get. You can't really predict the future on this. 
the gross margin is negative 26 percent with the new numbers that came out and its overall net margin right now is over a thousand fifty five percent which is the lowest compared to the industry but I'm, I'm not really worried about that at the moment it's important to note that the company has just started churning out the revenue and it will take a few years for all these partnerships to currently ha has in this pipeline the chart showing up uh, to to really see what that number is going to be in the in the end now looking at the growth rates analysis uh first they don't pay any dividends like the like their peers um and let's look at the growth rates now it's all earnings decline over the past 12 months they're churning their production all through at a slower rate than the decline in revenues uh this was better than the average company in the industry that they're in now i just want to you know say it again that even though that revenue is forecast to grow 76 percent per year it plans to reinvest that money and i want to want to get that like their numbers aren't going to look good for a few quarters uh because they're they're the, the money they're investing and in, back into their company all right so let's look at the financial strength of this company so the it has little to no debt thus it's extremely little financial risk they have a lot of um capital on hand now short-term assets of 388 million dollars exceed both its short-term liabilities of only 17 million and its long-term liabilities of 41 million it has efficient cash runway for three years based on its current free cash flow and if you forecast their cash runway it has a sufficient cash runway for 1.3 years if the free cash flow continues to reduce at the historical rates of 58 percent per year but i think this that's going to change uh, because they're they're getting they're going to get significant revenues coming up in the next two years, but it is important to note though shareholders have been significantly diluted not significantly but diluted in the past year with the total shares outstanding growing about eight point two percent that's never a good thing for for value for existing shareholders, and um, it is good to note that the insiders of the company have only bought shares than they have sold they bought more shares than they have sold in the past three months. So what do the current analysts out there say regarding this company right now? Well, let's find out about that. So the current consensus is a buy recommendation of these analysts. 83% uh, say buy and 16% say strong buy. And the average price target of this company over the next 12 months is $31 a share with a high estimate of 50 and a low estimate of 19. And let's go over some of the analyst reports that, that I could find. I didn't find many. So one of the reports was the Ford Equity Research Report, and they had a sell recommendation on the company, and it's a result of their systematic analysis of the three basic characteristics that they look at. They look at earnings strength, relative valuation, and recent stock price movement. The company has produced a positive trend in earnings per share over the past five quarters because the company lacks sufficient analyst data. Um, they play greater risk on the historical earnings per share trend as the measure of earnings strength based on operating earnings yield. The company is overvalued when compared to all the companies they cover. They, they cover share price changes over the next uh, past year indicates that the company will perform very poorly over the near term. It's more of a quantitative approach and I'm not worried, worried about their earnings uh, earnings per share right now. And the CFR Ray report, they do have a quantitative analysis that they did a couple days ago. They have a sell recommendation for the quantitative model uh, for the United States. They said valuation and growth were the two largest drivers of the sell recommendations. They said their valuation includes uh, priced earnings, price to EBITDA, and price to cash flow. But I'm not too worried. I'm projecting significant revenues going into 2023 and 2024. So, and then they said the growth factors for the earnings per share growth. So I, I'm not really too worried about these analyst reports. So let me bring it back over here. So based on all the information that we just saw, am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on Inovix? Well, here are my thoughts regarding that. Now, recently, Inovix shares are trading higher after uh, a Loop Capital uh, analyst maintained a buy rating on this company, and it raised the price target from $50 to $100, which definitely had a good impact on the stock price over the short term. Now, this lithium battery stock is well positioned to outperform the market in the whole over the next two years based on several cats uh, several catalysts now in the second half of 2023 Inovix will likely start recognizing initial revenue from both the the partnerships with apple and samsung watches now the company may also be able to start recognizing licensing revenue from those deals in 2024 
So if you're betting on this company, you're betting for lithium and battery technology and how much deals that this company can get over the you know, next few years. Now, of course, this is one of your riskier bets. Although lithium battery technology is exciting for its potential, it's important to note that it is a volatile industry as a whole. The future aspect that I would want to be in the stock right now is the future possible strategic partnerships that the company can get over the next few years. I am betting that the next few quarters, like, uh, like that analyst at Loop, that in the upcoming quarters, either Apple, Meta, Samsung, or Tesla could take an equity stake in the company, maybe, or initiate a production licensing agreement, which is more likely than actually taking a stake in it. But you never know, either one could happen. The company has all large uh, customers wanting their product. And I think that the company may announce an electric vehicle partnership in 2022 and begin to see revenue from a car partnership as early as 2023. Now, if something like that happens to this stock, it would jump up parabolic because it seems like there's a correlation between everything EV and going renewable technology crave in the marketplace right now. And if they see this small little company having a huge partnership with a huge EV firm like Tesla, that just could make it go parabolic. Now, I do agree with the, that analyst that if Tesla ever becomes an EV partner, that the company stock could even go up to $100 per share. It's definitely possible. Now, part of the reason that the EV partners would move forward is because of an OX, a brake flow technology with combustion fire containment, which is extremely important. You don't want your batteries to explode on the interstate like we saw some news in the, in the past years. Now, investors should monitor the company continued progress in the following months with regard to its targets. It's ramping up production at its Fab One uh, factory and growing the revenue. As long as they, they keep going forward, we're going to be okay. Now, some would say that it has a flawless balance sheet and some, some say limited growth, but I, I disagree. I do not see limited growth, but I see with the right partnerships, like a possible Tesla future, I see huge growth potentials in the years to come, even beyond 2024. It's kind of like if you build it, this company will basically have demand for its products, unlimited demand. It just it just feels that way. So based on all of that, I am a long-term buy recommendation on Enovix with a 12-month price target of $35 a share. I would wait to the new subsides over the past week though to buy the dip and then wait for the long term. So the strategy would be, you know, it's taken, it's gone extremely parabolic after that news article came out. So I would wait to that subsides, you know, buying uh, maybe a couple more dollars down and then just hold for the long term. I would hold and I would place, if you want to get the most out of the stock, wait three to five years and then look at your portfolio, but always quarterly look at what the company is doing and monitor, you have to monitor all your investments. But as of right now, this would be a risky bet three to five uh, year time frame to, to, to reap the best benefits out of, out of it. So there you have it, folks. As always, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Definitely helps. And consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks, ciao.